Hello and welcome to another one of uh, the Bridge Burner tutorial series. Uh, today we are going to be coming off something relatively simple, but uh, very vital and oft overlooked um, by particularly new mappers, but even experienced um, users of the program um, uh, don't always uh, use this feature, and that is the key config list. So we're going to go through every feature of UDB, um, time time willing, um, and just roll through them, what they, the basics of what they do, um, whether they're useful, um, or, well, more accurately, whether I think it's useful, um, so whether it's something you should be adding into your toolkit, um, or if it's something that I don't use, um, or I'm not super familiar with it, because there will be a couple of things in there that I, I, I don't use. Um, so I'm not 100% um, on, uh, on this yet, um, despite um, all uh, appearances otherwise. So um, yeah, we'll just get started. Um, so first things first, F5 gets you to the preferences uh, interface. You've got all these tabs up here, lots of useful stuff in here. Um, change uh, the visual mode settings to your preference, um, effect change view distance, um, which is good for uh, performance. Um, lots of personal preference stuff. That's, we won't go through all of this today, um, but there's lots of stuff in here that's worth, worth uh, diving into. It's not a huge list. Um, everything kind of does what it says on the packet. Um, uh, and um, actually one thing that I will highlight because it is ultra, ultra handy is synchronized selection between visual and classic modes. What that does is when you select a surface, be it a line, thing, whatever, it will be highlighted in 2D mode as well. It will, proper, it will stay selected between modes and what you can do is switch between floor view and ceiling view and now it's selected the, um, selected the ceiling. Back to floor, floor is selected. Um, so I remember putting that on a while ago, sorry I don't want that, um, and I've never looked back, that, is, that was very, very, very handy. Um, so I would recommend um, uh, tagging that on. So F5 to, F to preferences, and then it's controls tab, and that just has everything um, that is in the editor. Um, so yeah, we'll just start at the top and we'll scroll through it. The good thing about this is there is a search function or a filter. Um, so if you are looking for something specific, but you're not sure where it is, um, you can use that. You can uh, search by mode um, as well. Um, so it's got classic mode there, drawing, edit, rendering, line. So it's all broken down. So I can't search by mode, but it is broken down by mode. Um, so uh, it is nicely categorized. Um, so it's an easy thing to work through. Um, but if you're not familiar with it, I do recommend just going up to the top and, and scrolling through it like we're going to go through today. Right, so... Enter, pretty straightforward, accept action. So that's when you open up a, a, win, a box, um, you know, put in a feature, enter, blah, blah, blah. Easy one. Um, align grid to selected line if that has actually been deprecated um, by the smart grid transform. So you can ignore that one now, but that used to be the old grid rotate um, to selected line function. Uh, cancel action, escape, pretty straightforward. Copy properties. So that won't copy the geometry or anything like that, but it will copy the properties of the line or the sector or the thing that you have selected. So if it's a thing, it'll be the, the actor type, the direction it's facing, any thing IDs on it, um, any actions on it. Um, same with the sector, it'll be the sector tags, sector glows, um, sec uh, flat alignments, anything like that. Line, be the texture, texture alignments, offsets, scaling, line actions, all that kind of stuff. So pretty much everything except um, the geometry. Edit, pretty straightforward one. Right click, open up the edit window. Uh, fit to screen is the grid, sorry, the view. Um, what you've selected, it will zoom in and out to make your selection fit. I don't use that one um, at all. I just manually adjust. Grid and backdrop setup. So there's a little, uh, little button down here in the lower corner. Uh, where it says 64 MP, that's the grid size that it's currently set. If you click that, it will open up the grid editing and you can put, um, you can manually select your grid sizes and you can input and put a, uh, an image to trace around um, or like a map layout that you've drawn. You can photograph it, scan it, put it in, load the image and it will be the map back backdrop. Um, not important enough to hotkey I'd say, but very useful in specific situations. Um, so I very much recommend knowing of that one. Um, yeah, I've used it a couple of times and when I have used it, it's been really handy. Paint select, 
godsend. Um, middle bell spot is the default binding. You can change it, obviously. Uh, but it means that if you hold it down and swipe over things, it'll select them. Um, shift to do, do additive, select control to do uh, subtractive, um, and then just hold middle to alternate. Very, very handy. Uh, pan view, straightforward, hold it, moves the screen around. Uh, space is default. Paste properties, so that links to the copy properties. Paste the properties that we, we talked about. Paste properties special. Uh, I don't normally use this one, um, but it means you can select which of the properties you are applying, which can be useful in specific uh, use cases. Um, but I have can't remember the last time I actually used that, to be honest. Uh, place visual mode camera. Generally not required because Q will take you to where your cursor is um, anyway, uh, but you can you can place a visual mode camera um, that's for the editor, so you often see it floating around. Um, we've left it, but I, yeah, I wouldn't worry about that one. A uh, reset grid transform that is um, paired up with your line to selected line def. You don't actually need that function anymore, um, but you can bind that so that resets the grid um, if you've aligned it. Scroll keys, straightforward, mouse button, uh, sorry, keyboard uh, arrows, up, down, left, right, move your, move your, move your screen around. Select left melon, pretty straightforward. Uh, set grid origin to selected vertex. That's the last of the old grid align functions. So it moves the grid to that vertex. It won't align the lines, but it will shift the grid origin. Um, but now there's something called smart grid transform, which does all of those things in one button. If, you're in, if you've got a line highlighted, it will align it to the line, the grid. If you've got a vertex highlighted, it will align the grid to that vertex. If you've got nothing selected, it will reset. So it's a combination of those three uh, old functions um, rolled into one. So um, I recommend if you haven't used grid uh, alignment before, just use that. Get used to using that one button. Um, it'll save you a bit of time and hassle. Uh, tag range, uh, I don't actually use this very often, but I know a lot of people do. It'll tag a selection from starting at a certain value the input up in incrementing values um, you can duplicate that with various other commands such as the greater than equals to sign for sector tags or the plus 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 um, uh, for incrementing values so useful but there are other ways to do that function toggle dynamic grid size i don't use this this will automatically adjust your grid based on your zoom so the further you zoom out the bigger the grid the closer you zoom in the grid will shrink could be useful in certain cases, certainly something that you have to get used to, uh, but I don't use that. Toggle grid does what it says on the packet, turns the grid off and on. Um, and then um, we've got some more zoom buttons, uh, scroll up and down. Um, uh, mouse, that's the mouse wheel scroll, oh, very handy one that one. Um, use that one a lot. <coughs> Alright, so there's the, um, the, the basic uh, functions in classic mode. Uh, we're going to draw mode. So draw mode is... Um, there is a draw mode, which is control D, um, start drawing. So this is the other drawing functions and there's some useful stuff in here. So bridge mode, I don't know anyone that uses that. Um, it makes some kind of like a bunch of sectors that you can turn into a bridge. Um, I, I, yeah, like I said, I've never used that one. Um, I think I pressed it once and went, this is kind of weird and then threw it away. Um, Decrease corners level and decrease subdivision level are related to, and same with the increase, are related to the draw grid function um, and draw rectangle. So when you use those, those you'll draw a rectangle and you can set the divisions, it'll, it'll slice it up and you can bevel the corners. Um, kind of esoteric stuff, I know Boris likes using them a lot, uh, I don't, uh, I'd rather manually draw stuff. Um, but the draw draw grid and draw rectangle are actually quite useful. They're not as kind of simple as they sound. Um, and one thing I will point out is um, in conjunction with that. So um, actually, no, ellipse doesn't have it. Sorry. Um, we'll go to draw grid. So you got this grid. Go up to here. This is called the Docker. Up on this, I my uh, you can't see it because of my camera. So let's move that over. There we go. So up here it's called the docker. You can input these values here as well. So horizontal, vertical slices, various other features. Um, so check that as well if you're using the draw grid or draw rectangle um, uh, functions. Uh, there's, there's useful stuff up there. Um, if it's in normal edit mode, it's just the undo redo. If you're in 3D floor mode, it has 3D floor information, but that docker is handy. There's often very useful information and tools buried in that that are not always that clear. 
Um, so whenever you're doing something, just go and have a look over it. Uh, one of my favorites is if you're editing something, you can input rotation values, you can input scaling, um, you can shift things. Uh, so I use this one a lot in the edit mode, um, uh, mostly for rotation. So you can input very specific rotation values uh, when you try to copy paste stuff. Um, so that one's really handy. And so we talked about those. Okay, so remove um, first and last vertex. So this is a really handy one that not many people know about. So when you're in draw mode, you're drawing your lines. Shit, I didn't want to place that one. Press backspace, it will remove the last one that you drew. Press it again, it will remove that last one. Press it again, remove that last one. And then control backspace, which I actually don't use, but it's also very handy. It will remove the first one placed. If you've realized I didn't actually want to start there, you can actually remove the first lines that you've drawn. Um, obviously, if it's something in the middle that you want to change, well, you're kind of out of luck, but that is a really handy um, key, that one. So yeah, backspace in particular, very handy. Um, so you often make mistakes when you're drawing and you don't want to have to redraw. Like if you've been doing a big complex shape, pain in the ass to have to redraw it. Um, start curve drawing. Um, so that's the draw curve. I don't use that function, but that's when you when you draw the line, it will start curving things for you. I know Tango uses it a lot for his natural um, designs. Um, I've never found a particularly good use for it. Um, start drawing, standard draw mode, control D. Um, start ellipse drawing, so that's the circle tool. Um, I've changed the binding. Um, I think it's usually control shift D, maybe? No, that's draw rectangle. It was alt shift D, something like that is the default. Um, there's buttons up here for it, there's the ellipse tool up there. Um, I've bound it to a key on, a button on the side of my mouse, which is top white says one. Uh, we talked about draw grid and draw rectangle. So there's the various draw tools. Lots of handy stuff in there, worth experimenting with all of them and finding out which ones you think are useful. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that's a good that's a good pocket of, of useful stuff there. Um, edit, um, auto clear side def textures. I don't actually know what that one specifically does other than it sounds like it automatically clears side def textures. Maybe when you're copying things, um, it's not bound. Um, might be one to check. Um, so yeah, that's that's the first one that I've actually not entirely sure what it does. Uh, clear selection, uh, C, nice. Um, I never actually remember having a conversation with someone who forgot what that button was. Um, very useful one. Um, copy selection, standard stuff. Cut selection, pretty standard stuff as well. Control C, Control X, your usual um, control uh, cut and um, copy uh, buttons. Uh, decrease brightness by eight. So this is a good handy one. Any sectors that you've got selected or even just highlighted, you can hold control and scroll your mouse wheel up and down and it will change the brightness of that sector. This works in 2D and 3D mode. Um, yeah, so that's quite a handy one for quickly altering brightness levels. Uh, if you're in boom, that is set to 16 for some reason. I don't know why. I think it's a hammer from vanilla. Um, delete, delete the item. Backspace, dissolve the item. There is a difference. Um, I can't remember exactly what the specifics between the two were, but there is a very small semantic difference between the two functions. Um, flip selection, so this is when you've edited, you're in edit mode, um, and you wanna flip what you've selected. Uh, I can't remember what if this is bound initially. I don't think it is, I can't remember, uh, but I, I do set these bindings. Um, so that's flip horizontally and flip vertically, very, very useful. Uh, grid decrease and increase. Um, I can't remember what these originally bound were. I definitely changed those because that's the, what was um, uh, I used for deep sea. Um, but that just increments your grid size up and down, nice and handy. Uh, we got another brightness, so scroll up. Um, insert item. So whatever your last thing selected um, and placed, it will insert another one of those. Um, kind of useless because that right click does the same thing in um, thing mode. Map options F2, um, pretty useful. <coughs> a little um, bunch of things in there. Uh, merge drag geometry and merge drag vertices only. That's changing these settings here. I don't hotkey them, I do it manually through there. Um, but you can bind keys for that. Paste selection, straightforward. Paste selection special. Um, that's again, um, uh, I think that's actually a repeat of the classic mode one, but that's um, where you can pick which uh, things specifically you are pasting. Uh, redo, pretty standard one there, uh, paired with undo. Uh, do pay attention to the undo redo docker. 
Uh, so if you're no, if you're not in like edit or draw or grid or whatever, this will just have an, the entire list of every action you've done in that session. It does cap out at some point, like if you've been mapping for a long time, um, but you can go back and forth through all of your actions, actually quite handy. Um, just pay, make note, if you go back, say you went back 100 actions, and you just wanted to check something and go back, do not do anything new, because if you go back and then do a new action, it will erase everything that you've undone, um, and you won't be able to bring it back. So just be careful with that. Um, then we've got to rotate counter and clockwise. Um, that'll just be your edited things. Um, just use the mouse for that. Uh, I don't think that's particularly handy, um, but there is that. Um, select similar map elements. I don't actually know what that does. Um, so mysterious, mysterious um, tool there. Snap selected map elements to grid. Um, so that'll just mean whatever you've selected, it will, it will snap to a grid um, uh, grid uh, coordinate. Um, I've actually got toggling of snap to grid um, bound. Um, so I turn that on and off all the time. Uh, so it's, when I'm doing natural areas, I'll do free draw. And then if I want to go back to structure stuff, well, then I'll snap the grid back on. Um, snap to geometry, same thing as snap to grid, but it's two existing geometry. Uh, split join sectors. Um, I think that draws a line for you. There's a make sectors mode, so I don't think that has any particular use worth experimenting with, maybe. Um, but I haven't used that one ever before. Um, but make sectors seems to be the one that will cover that off anyway. Um, view thing types will just list, will show you what things you've used, and view used tags will show you what um, yeah, sector tags you've, uh, you've used in the map. Uh, file functions, all standard stuff, close new map, open, save, blah, blah. Rendering, this is just what you see in the visual mode editor. Um, so up here, we've got toggle dynamic lights, we've got toggle fog, toggle sky. This is what happens, was what changes when people press tab by accident. It'll stop rendering the sky and 3D floors and dynamic lights. Ah, oh, where did my map stuff go? That's what's changing. Um, these are uh, bindings that you can input to manually turn each one on and off, which can be useful because um, it reduces a lot of clutter. So there's, you know, those are useful features, um, but I've never found the need to bind them specifically. Um, right, uh, into a line uh, mode. So this is when you press L into line mode. Um, so you can align your ceiling and floor flats to a specific surface um, uh, in 2D mode. I've never actually gotten that to work. I just do it all in uh, 3D mode. Um, with the standard um, A and Shift A um, align functions. I mean, yeah, I've never really got those to work. Um, I don't know what align line depths does. Maybe that, that might actually, what if that straightens, what if that straightens everything? I'll have to experiment with that one. Um, uh, apply light fog effect, does what it says on the packet. I'm not entirely sure what the light fog does. Uh, curve line depths, so that's your curve line tool. I use that a lot, that's bound to the side of my, side of my mouse. Flip line depths. So that little fin poking out of a, a line that shows it's which side it's facing, which side of the front, it'll flip which way that's facing. Very useful one to have. Um, flip side depths, I don't think that's useful at all, um, but that would flip the sides so of the textures from one to the other kind of thing. The properties of each side diff will be flipped. Um, now, here's a pretty interesting one that I still haven't used that much, but it is quite handy. Do a selection, select a bunch of lines, do shift one, it will only select single-sided lines. Shift two, only select double-sided lines. Can be handy, um, but I haven't found a specific use case where I thought that, yes, that is the way to do this. I've always had found other ways that are better to select what I need to select. Usually paint select um, uh, is a good one. So yeah, it is useful. I know some people that do use it. Um, uh, so definitely, definitely a good one. Our split line diffs will split a line into a set number of pieces. It does exactly the same thing, uh, curve line with an angle of zero, um, but there's a split line diff function, so you can use that if you want, uh, but I just use curve line. Um, all right, and that's all the align mode uh, buttons. Modes, um, automap mode, it's when you do your automap cleanup. Ooh, who does that? <laughs> um, so yeah, but that's to move into automap mode to clean up the automap. Um, yeah, if you're doing your roadmap clear up, that's, that's the place to go. Ceiling align mode. 
um, and floor line mode. So these are two quite useful modes where um, you select a sector and enter that mode and it will then show a, a um, actually I think this is one to demonstrate quickly. Um, it'll show you this and you can align the flat to wherever you want. You can pull this point out. I'll do a tutorial on this, but this is a, this is a line ceiling in flat mode. Um, actually, actually really handy. Um, and it can scale. So um, that one, that one is good. Um, so I've got those bound to Alt C and Alt F. Um, I think I will do include those how to use those well in a tutorial later. Um, but yeah, obviously useful for useless for boom, um, UDMF only stuff. Uh, but that's really handy. Um, edit selection mode E. Um, select the things you want to edit. Press E. You're in the edit mode. Uh, find and replace F3. Really handy thing there. Um, hunting down errant uh, unused or errant textures with the wrong name, or you've changed resources, or you want to delete all the barons from a map, whatever. Find and replace is really handy. Line desk mode, line desk mode. Make sector mode, another useful one. If you've got a bunch of joined sectors um, uh, that you want to separate, go to make sector mode um, uh, by pressing M and then you click on those sectors that you want to separate out. Map analysis mode, another very handy one. Error checker is what that is. Um, know it, make love to it, make it your friend. Um, nodes viewer. Tends to make uh, UDB crash when I use it, um, but handy if you're making vanilla maps um, to check. Oh, sorry, no, 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 no that's a VizPlane viewer, VizPlane mode, sorry. No, no viewer is, yeah, it still makes my maps crash, but it will track and it will show you the node pathing for when the map is built. I don't think it's particularly handy. Uh, it doesn't seem to work very well. Uh, I'd ignore it. Uh, six is mode S. Um, sound environment uh, mode is for reverbs, reverb environments. Um, kind of shows how they're propagating and um, I haven't really used that. Uh, sound propagation mode is a very handy one. It shows which areas are linked sound wise. So if you make a noise, will the monster hear you over there? It'll color, it color coordinates them really, really handy. And also if you're in that mode and you click on a line, it will turn it into a blocking, a sound block line. Um, so that's really, really cool. Um, stair Builder, everyone's favorite. Um, that's not normally bound to a key. Um, I have bound it to one of my mouse keys because I use it all the fucking time. Um, Stair Builder, Thing Mode, T, Vertex Mode, uh, V. Um, this Planet Explorer, we talked about that one um, uh, for useful for vanilla mapping. Um, it's indicative, it's not perfect, but it is pretty good. And then Visual Mode, Q, so go into 3D mode. Uh, prefabs, I don't really use them, um, but you can hotkey create prefab and insert prefab from files. So if you use a lot of prefabs, uh, use those, um, but like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't frequently use prefabs. Um, uh, sector modes, um, so it's S to get to sector mode. Join sectors, J, so that'll join join sectors without m removing the line between them, so it will retain all geometry. Um, lower ceiling by eight, and lower floor by eight, so this is counted by the rays. So shift and scroll wheel, will move the ceiling. Control, Alt, and scroll wheel will move the floor. Actually pretty handy. Um, shift and scroll wheel is one that I often accidentally do, and I'll find, what the fuck is that ceiling moved? Um, and it's because I've accidentally flicked the scroll wheel while holding shift. Not my own fault. Um, but that is useful. Um, useful enough for me to not unbind it, despite often having to redo stuff. Uh, next one, make brightness gradient. So these are the gradient tools up here. You can choose a linear or a sign pattern of grading, uh, gradating. Uh, you can do it for sector brightness, you can do it for color, for fade, you can do it for floor height, ceiling heights. Um, very, very, very handy tool. Great for making stairs. Um, you set your top and your bottom height, gradate. Draws, draws the, um, the stairs all at the, um, the same increments up um, to make them nice and even. Um, so G for brightness, shift G for ceilings, and control G for floors. Um, and there are other things that you can change. Uh, I think there were other, other ones that are light related. Um, but the gradate tool, very, very, very useful. Um, make door, I don't know anyone that actually uses that despite everyone, all new mappers going, how do you make doors? So there is actually literally a, 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 a make door button, um, which makes you a door. 
Uh, we talked about the raised ceiling. Um, select sectors outline. That must do, if you've selected a bunch of sectors and then pressed that, it must select for only the lines around the outside. That sounds quite handy. Um, synchronize things editing. Uh, that's this button up here. If it's on, if you select a sector, you'll also be editing all the things in it. So if you're moving it up and down or copying it, normally effects copy paste, it will copy the things in there as well. You turn it off, it won't copy the things. Group selecting, I don't use these. It is quite handy, uh, particularly if there's something that you keep going back and wanting to, to alter or, or copy or adjust. You can assign groups. So kind of like in, a, um, in an RTS game how you can group your units and give them a number. You can do that to things in uh, Doom Builder as well. Lines, sectors, whatever you want, it, you can assign it a group, and then when you select that group, it will, it will select that. So um, I've used it a couple times, um, but yeah, I don't think I've found it ultra useful. Um, but yeah, that's there. Um, configure colors for sound propagation mode, so you can set the colors. I don't think that's particularly handy. Uh, it automatically assigns them, um, so I wouldn't worry about that. Um, thing mode, you've um, got thing filter, um, which is up here, uh, so you can hotkey that. Um, align things to nearest line def, I haven't used that, I wonder what that does. I wonder if it moves them or it just points them at it, interesting. Um, uh, point thing to cursor, now this is a really handy one that a lot of people don't know about. Um, I think I will demo this one. So if you've got a bunch of things and you want these all to be facing into the middle, select them. Put your cursor where you want them to look, shift L, and now they're all facing into that wherever you're pointing. So I want them there, I want them all facing over here, shift L, it will change over there. Very, very handy. Great for aligning teleporters, like if you've got a ring of teleporters, you want them all facing in, all the monsters coming in. Uh, shift L, really, really handy, that one. Um, I use that a lot. <clears throat> uh, the Glorious 3D Floor Plugin, now I have done a tutorial on this uh, separately um already so uh, if you want to um learn more about the actual workings of the 3d floor plugin um go check that out um it's on my youtube page um and where this tutorial will be once it's um once it's loaded um so 3d floor editing mode i've that's not normally bound uh that is entering 3d floor mode i've got it bound to tilde um so i press that and it goes into 3d floor mode um highlighting cycle so that's just cycling through the 3D floors. Uh, if you've got multiple ones in the same uh, selection. Um, right. Ignore these. Ignore the draw slopes. These are an old deprecated system that will cause your uh, builder to crash if you use them. <laughs> I always think I was the only person who used them. Um, so this is the precursor to the slope handles. It was the only way you could make complicated 3D slopes. It was a fucking nightmare. Don't touch it. <laughs> Do not enter draw slope mode. I, I've been telling Boris to remove it. It's these two buttons here. Do not touch them. Um, it is a trap. Um, so ignore those. Duplicate paste geometry. Really, really handy one. Select your 3D floor structure and any non-3D structures that you want, but you have to have a part, at least some 3D floors in there. Control W will copy and paste everything, much like a normal copy paste, but it will generate new 3D floor control sectors that will then also adjust if they're sloped to a new relative position. Um, so really handy if you're making arches, you want to like move, put them around a circle um, or slopes facing into something. Copy paste geometry, that's what you want to do if you're copy pasting like complicated uh, 3D structures that have slopes specifically. Um, but yeah, it will create new control sectors. Um, so for aligning flats, for making new slopey bits, um, for bits maybe you want to move them later in the different patterns, copy paste geometry, really, really, have, really, really handy there. Um, finish slope drawing, that's part of the slope tool, ignore. Same with the flip slope. Relocate 3D floor control sectors. There is a button for this uh, if you're in 3D mode. Um, I don't have it bound. That's a really handy one. Um, if you just want to move all your control sectors, put the green square somewhere else. Off they go. Um, Doom Builder will automatically adjust all of your um, aligned flats and slopes and all that kind of stuff. Very, very handy. Um, select 3D floor control sector. Limited, but very handy when you need it. Uh, if you have a 3D floor selected and press O, it will then highlight the actual control sector off in the, in the control sector uh, collection um, and select it. 
so um every now and then you you want to go and directly edit that um but um yeah that that's there it's been less of an issue less useful since the relocate tool was used because i used to use it to hunt down the control sectors to kill them so um uh, i've found better ways to do that so i don't use that anymore but that, that does exist and yeah slope mode is part of all this draw slope stuff get rid yeah. right tools so this is all general like editor formatting stuff you can change the colors of the line defs so you know an impassable line is a dark thick white um you know normal lines kind of that faint gray white kind of thing 3d floor uh, um lines are red you can configure all those colors uh you can create new thing filters so that's up here um i don't know why you'd hotkey that i'll generally do it up there um but there's that so use, useful tools but i don't think they're worth hotkeying exports to image so that is the um texture exporter so you make some lovely sector art and then you can export that as a, as a texture um and then load it back in and i will do a tutorial on that because it's very very fucking awesome um but there'll be a separate tutorial but that's the export to image um it's under file um i don't think it's worth hotkeying uh export to wavefront obj uh that's for exporting as a model so same kind of concept uh but 3d um also awesome um game configurations f6 um since we set up things like your, your node builder and your testing uh programs all that kind of stuff um import wavefront obj as terrain so that's for importing height maps again not really with hotkeying but useful in specific situations if you want to bring in a model height map it will then map a whole lot of vertices um to those heights I mean, uh, open color picker k um so this is for coloring anything uh dynamic lights sectors um sprites whatever uh it's got a color wheel sometimes easier than inputting uh manual rgb values Pardon me. uh preferences f5 that's what we are now uh reload gl defs reload model defs reload resources so if you've made an edit to a file uh you know part of your pk3 or whatever you can then reload the resources without having to reopen the map um uh which is very handy um screenshot f12 screenshot without the borders so just the map space control f12 better for a, a cleaner screenshot uh show errors f11 so that's down the bo bottom right hand corner if you've got flashing stuff down there that'll that'll bring that up test map f9 uh and then a very useful one that some people uh don't know about is control f9 so that'll test the map from where your cursor is so no longer do you have to keep bouncing your player around you can just point where you want to test from and you'll test from there it also works in 3d mode um so control f9 i very re i use that way more than f9 f9 i only use if i'm testing like the map from the start generally um control f9 is awesome um all right transform features there's a couple of things here apply directional shading is something that i've tried to use in the past but haven't really it's i definitely need to dig into it because i think it is handy it'll essentially add shadowing to the sides of it's to the textures um in a sector so it's for creating like sunlight effects and i do feel like i want to i should use that more and try and get some use out of it because it does sound like a um uh, the kind of thing that could create some really cool effects so definitely something to play with um uh randomize uh awesomely useful function so that will randomize uh various properties um i use it for create like if i want to create like a broken fractured kind of rock face i will set them all draw the, the sectors then use an increment function to just lift them up so that they're going you know up 16 higher each time and then give them a slight randomize so you can input like plus minus four and everything will go up or down by between one and four um you can do it to vertex locations um as well it's really really handy for making natural kind of chaotic shapes um don't oft overlooked but really really handy i love the randomize function um so really recommend that one uh go to coordinates um what it does it says on the pack i don't know this could be useful in some specific use cases if you if you didn't know if you knew what you were looking for but not where it was and you found it say in using gz dooms where's the last monster function um gives you a coordinate well then you can find it in the editor so some specific uses there um next view mode does what it says switches between view modes i don't think i've ever heard of anyone using that uh script editor f10 um obviously um gz doom udmf only um not useful for boom uh 
All right, so you got these all these toggle features. Um, so event lines are those those lines that you see. Um, there, so those are event lines. You can toggle them on and off. Um, which, because you can, they can get very busy, can get, can get quite chaotic. Um, so that's the event lines. Comments, that's when you put a comment in the comment box on anything, it'll give it, there'll be a little little icon uh, in the editor, so you can toggle them on and off. Toggle fixed things scale, that normally when you zoom in and out, things will adjust their size. Um, so you zoom in closer, they look bigger, zoom further away, they look smaller. You can make it fixed so it's the same size no matter how far in or out you zoom. Dynamic lights actually do this automatically, which is quite interesting. And I don't know if you can change that. Uh, toggle full brightness B, so if you want to go full bright, everything 255 uh, in the editor, uh, which is if you're editing dark areas, press B, B to turn it back off. Uh, highlight, um, if you want to toggle that on and off, that works in 2D and 3D mode, these all do actually. Um, so if you don't want to see the highlight because that can be distracting sometimes. I do toggle it sometimes. Uh, that's H, so if you find that you can't, normally people find out that they can't see their highlight anymore. They go, ah, oh, fuck, what have I hit? You've hit H. Um, so that's that's the highlight button. Info panel, that's this panel down here. I've actually debound it because I never don't want it, but it does impact performance in 3D mode. So if you're finding a lot of stuttering, even with a low view distance, toggle the info panel off because with the effort panel, if you're switching between textures, what your faces that you're looking at, that keeps updating and it does it does put load on the system. So that does that will have a noticeable FPS improvement if you are if you find things stuttering in um, in 3D mode. Um, view brightness levels that shows the brightness levels across the map in 2D mode um, without textures. So a bright areas are bright, dark areas are dark. Ceiling textures. So that's the feature up here. Actually, all, all of them are up here. Um, so ceiling and floor view mode, uh, that's in 2D, it will display the floor or the ceiling textures in the editor. And then wireframe is, is what it says, it's just a wireframe. Um, the floor and ceiling texture ultra uh, switching is very, very handy. Um, depending on what, if you're editing a ceiling, well, you want to see the ceiling. If you're editing the floor, you want to see the floor. I find that really handy. Um, although I don't have it bound, I just, I just go and click on it. Uh, for there. And into visual mode, which has uh, got a whole raft of features here. Um, a lot of them are duplicates from 2D mode. Um, and then there's obviously some specific things here. So this is a new one, apply camera rotation to things. I haven't actually used this one yet. Um, I know Ball has. So what this does is, if you have a thing selected in 3D mode, you can align that thing's direction in both X and Y to where your camera is pointing. So it's like the shift L function, but for 3D space. So quite a, quite handy for like spotlights. Uh, if you want, oh, the spotlight pointing up there. You point your camera there, you stand on the spotlight and you point, point where you're looking there and then you press that and it will point that spotlight there. You have to have selected it. Um, I tend to prefer manually specifically pointing things, uh, but that is a really handy feature. Um, Another new one, Arch Between Slope Handles, glorious, glorious tool. Um, I will do a tutorial on this one, but that is for forming arches, um, part of the new slope handle um, collection of uh, tools. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to go deep into that one, but that's your slope handle arching, uh, which you will have seen me do on, on stream. Um, and you've got a bunch of alignment features. The only ones that I do are the um, X, Y, and X and Y which are these three here, um, and that does all that, all that I really need. Works on flats as well, so when you see me going on my aligning sprees, those are the buttons that I'm using there. Uh, alter pitch, alter roll, so those are the other two um, planes um, from angle, so angle is, you know, round and round, uh, and then pitch roll, I think. Um, only really useful for spotlights and models, uh, roll sprites maybe, a uh, few use cases, um, uh, so it is, it is handy, I wouldn't worry about binding anything to it, um, and I usually, uh, it's just part of the thing editing window. Uh, copy offsets, um, shift C, copy properties, control shift C, copy texture, control C, various copy features, um, all pretty self-explanatory, um, 
Decrease scaling. Uh, so this is scaling textures and flats. I don't use these buttons. I prefer either to use the floor slash ceiling align mode, which we've already looked at, and uh, or the um, auto scale, um, which we'll get down to. Um, so I don't I don't use those, but they are there. You can you can just I think it goes up by down by increments of 0.1 maybe. Um, I'm not entirely sure, um, uh, but those are there. Uh, edit, right click. Um, fit textures are so this is the one control alt a very very handy udmf only it will scale the textures the texture you've selected across the surface is selected so it will adjust across multiple split textures it has to be contiguous um but that's for scaling up like if something's not quite fitting you can auto scale it very very handy uh, might do a tutorial on that one um bundle that up with something so we can go a bit more into that into depth of that but that is a very handy feature the auto scale uh and then we've got um increase horizontal uh, scales pairing up with the decrease uh, again i don't use those i'll uh, look through selection i don't actually know what it does oh yes i do that is another new one that pairs up with the apply camera rotations of things if you have something selected press y your viewpoint will move to that thing and then you want to use the point function from there so that will put your uh your view camera directly on that thing so that's uh that is a handy one if you're pairing it up with that other function it's also a useful way to just jump around the map go select something why off you go um which is generally what i use it for um all right, so here's a couple of here's a couple of um in, uh, a couple of good ones. So you've got this pairs up with rays, um the the rays features. So you got lower floor ceiling thing, so any selected uh, element by one. So it's control. So scroll is is eight, shift scroll is one, and there is move by one hundred and twenty eight as well, which is not normally bound. So thank you to uh, Scotty through Insane Gazebo. Uh, that's how I learned about that one. If you're not making enormous maps, not so handy. But if you've got a lot of vertical space, really, really, really handy. Uh, but also, 120 is just a good use. Of, like a lot of textures are 120 out. So all you have to do is scroll your mouse wheel once, pops up, and you can slap that mob face right on there. Um, very much recommend binding that. Uh, and you've already got shift. Um, so control alt felt like the natural pairing to that. Um, so really, really good. And then the other one, and this is normally bound to page up and page down, I think. This will move to the nearest adjacent surface. So this is one that I will I will demo. Um, so say you've got let's go to three fours. This up here. And you're like, well, I want this one up here too. I don't want to have to like take it all the way up. And, oh, nope, I don't want that down. Take it back down. So it takes it down to the, the nearest surface. So if I've got two surfaces here to choose from, it will go up to that one, and then up to that one. Down, down. It works on things as well. So if you've got a thing up in the air, you want to take that down to the floor. Uh, I selected it, there we go. Smack, down he goes, up to the roof. Bring that up to the roof very very useful um that particular function so i've got that bound to my mouse it is normally page up and page down um i definitely recommend getting used to that one it's really really handy it works on slope handles awesome i use that so much it took me a while to get used to the, the thumb position um but yeah move to adjacent uh surface um very very handy uh match brightness just little match the brightnesses across um, multiple sectors uh, move backwards, move forward, move left, move right. That's your movement keys uh, for 3D mode. Move down to go down. I don't actually have that bound. I just look down and, and fly or press G, um, which is the gravity toggle. Um, moving textures. So that's just the various ways to move um, your your texture offsets. Um, and one that people don't know about is the move texture by grid size. So whatever your, whatever your grid value is, Control and then arrow key will move it by that value. So you can actually offset things by 64 or 128 quite quickly. You just have to remember to set your grid size to what you want, which I very rarely do. Um, so that's all those. Works on things as well. Um, sorry, thing move. That's your arrow keys. That will move them 
forward, left and right and back. Kind of hacky. I know some people who do it. I don't like doing it. Uh, it always, they always end up in weird spaces. Um, move thing to cursor location. I don't actually do that one, uh, but that's pretty handy. Uh, so I selected thing, move it to where your cursor is. Uh, paint select in 3D mode. This is a good one. Um, not bound. So we talked about paint select uh, in 2D mode. This does it in 3D mode. And I will give a quick demonstration of this one. So say you wanted to select all these stair surfaces. There we go. Now the very cool thing about the paint select in 3D mode is if you start selecting flats, it will not select textures. So I, I see I can't select the front of these stairs. Same way, vice versa. Select the front of the stair first, it will not select the surface, uh, the, the actual um, actual stair itself. It only selects the textures. Really, really handy once you get used to it. Um, really good for selecting stairs, stuff like that. Oh, I want to change the nosing texture. Yeah, no, fantastic. Uh, paint select, but not normally bound. Uh, so definitely hunt that one down and bind that yourself. I've bound it to a side button on my mouse um, for that one. Um, paste offsets, paste properties, paste properties, special, same as in 2D mode, but in 3D mode, exactly the same buttons. Um, for those, paste texture. When you've copied a texture, this is one of the most common buttons you'll use. Middle mouse button, it'll apply that texture to um, that surface. Paste texture flood fill, so that's shift, uh, shift and middle mouse button. That will propagate from where you've applied it to every texture of that same texture, including, so if you've got everything that's say G-Stone, you wanna change it to SP hot, shift middle click on one of those G-Stone textures, when you've copied the SP hot, it will then propagate that across all of the G-Stone hot that is connected to that. Um, it can do some weird things. Um, I might cover a tutorial on the various, I might do a selecting tutorial, selecting and yeah, that sounds like a good, a good one to do actually. Um, so I'm going to depth on how to use the flood fill um, well uh, today, but there are ways to use it well. But that's your flood fill button. More of the raising. Um, reset local texture offsets. Uh, this is UDMF only. Control Shift R will clear all offsets of all uh, textures, middle, lower, and upper. Uh, reset plane slope. That is a new one. Uh, I can bind that now. That's handy. Um, so that's resetting the slope handle, uh, which is a UDMF slope property value. Uh, so that's that's new. Uh, I'm going to bind that to something. Um, reset texture offsets. Shift R. This is the generic version of the local texture offsets. Um, so that works in boom. Uh, select left mouse button. Select texture. Control right mouse button. This is one that a lot of people don't know about, and I didn't until Boris yelled at me. If you highlight a texture, control right click, it will take you straight to the texture library. Uh, you don't have to go through the uh, properties window. Um, show things T toggles that on and off. There are three settings for that. Slope between handles, not a slope handle tool. Um, slope between two points. Um, total alpha base texture highlighting affects the brightness, I think. Yeah, that would affect the brightness. Um, I don't actually know what that does um, in terms of whether it makes it brighter or darker. Toggle enhanced rendering effects. So this is another frequently mishit uh, feature. Tab. If you can't see your 3D floors, if you can't see your dynamic lights, if you can't see your sky, you've probably hit tab. Um, again, it is useful to toggle off sometimes to reduce a lot of clutter. Um, I did, yeah, definitely use that. Toggle gravity, another commonly hit, mishit uh, button. If you find yourself on the floor and you can't get up, you probably hit the gravity button. Uh, useful for getting the actual player's perspective. It is pretty much the height of the Doom guy. It's like what can I actually see from this spot. No, I can't actually see those areas. I don't need to detail them. Oh, I can see there. Got to make that look good. Uh, and just to get a sense of perspective, it is handy. Uh, toggle lower unpicked and toggle upper, upper unpicked. L and U does what it says on the packet. Um, toggle slope. That's the old plane line. Um, plane line slope, Alt S. Um, so you highlight the texture for that to slope the, because it's a line action and it will slope uh, the in front of it. Um, yeah, was useful. Not so much anymore. Toggle visual side def slope picking. Um, so that's the old slope handles. I've got that bound to shift W. Uh, if you're into slopes, definitely recommend that. Toggle visual vertex slope picking. This is a new one. 
Boris has upgraded vertex slopes. This is now what it's called. Um, and so toggle visual vertices was the old vertex slopes where it has a little triangle pyramid thing that you can move up and down. This is the new one, and I will do a tutorial on this. Um, it works on 3D floors. It does not have to be a triangular sector. It is definitely an improvement. I've yet to really explore the implications of that, um, but it's fucking massive. Um, there are some structures that me and Insane Gazebo have been trying to think of ways to make, and now we can. Um, specifically sloped underside spiral staircases. Um, so yeah, that's, a, that, that's cool. So um, I will do a, it might be the next one actually, a slope handle visual uh, vertex slope and arch tool tutorial. That sounds like a good one. Um, so yeah, that is the product list as it were. Um, only a few that I uh, am not familiar with. I was pretty pleased with that. I think it was about five that I didn't quite know what did. Um, there was a few, couple, about three in there that I thought, hmm, I should check that out. So, you know, even someone like me who's untold thousands of hours using these editors, still stuff that I haven't, haven't discovered. Um, and I've scrolled through this list multiple times. <laughs> um, this is probably the first time I've sat down and actually read every single one in a row um so hopefully that was helpful um that went quite a bit longer than i anticipated um but whatever um uh that is the uh control config for ultimate doom builder um and if anything new interest interesting uh, gets added i'll be sure to probably mention it in a tutorial uh, on that feature because i'm guessing anything new will be fairly complex these days um, but Boris is always working on this and improving the features and how they work as well. So if something does change and you're like, wait, this was working differently before, um, hit me up, hit Boris up, come to the Hellforge, ask the questions, and um, yeah, we'll, get, we'll, we'll, we'll help you um, uh, if there has been something drastic change or it might be a bug or, or something like that. So um, uh, yeah, don't 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 freak out if things don't work the way they used to because there is often changes being implemented uh, to these, uh, particularly things like the slope handles, uh, the 3D floor plugin, you know, we were still finding the best way to use them and uh, working with people's workflows. And, you know, huge credit to Boris for being, um, you know, always up for uh, listening to the mappers and um, curating the tools to, um, to help them. So thanks for watching. Uh, like I said, hopefully that was helpful. Apologies for the length. Um, but um, I don't think we could have done that any any shorter um, and um, I'm probably should add some timestamp links to each menu chunk so people can jump to that that might be handy um, but that's effort and I don't have any so thanks for watching uh, we'll catch you next time um, should be um, more tutorials coming soon, and I think the next one will be the slope handles, um, which will be very exciting. Um, and um, uh, should be a lot of fun, that one, actually. Uh, so thank you, and we'll catch you next time.